Hi, this is Allison Malika, here to share with you how you can use forms as quizzes, uh, pre-assessment, icebreakers, or just exploratory learning. The idea here is not to go through the step-by-step -step process of, of what is a form, but to show you how it can be used as an integrated activity, uh, even how it can be used using Google Classroom. So I'm going to start out showing you an example of an activity I've placed in my Google Classroom. It's called a Quick Start Pre-Lesson Quiz. Now, this is a Google form that can be used for a variety of purposes. I've created this form uh, in Drive using Google Forms, so I just clicked on New, More, Create Form, and as a result, I created a title, information, ask for the first and last name of a student, and ask a series of questions. I'm actually guiding my students to a website to explore, to get some information without me having to articulate everything uh, from the beginning. So this is meant to be like a pre-assessment activity. It could be a homework activity, uh, a variety of, of approaches to it. So uh, to post it in Google Classroom, you create the form, and it will be in your Google Drive. And then all you need to do is create an assignment in Google Classroom and you literally go to Drive and you search for that form and attach it. And now once you've added the form in Google Drive, it will be saved as a viewable form that a student can take. Uh, the form is here. I'm going to go log in as a student to Classroom. i just start from scratch. I go to Class and I should see this assignment as it is posted uh, in the stream from the teacher. Now the student sees Open and can click on the link and when they do it will open the survey up. You might be wondering what if I don't use Classroom? How do I how do I do the same thing? Well whenever you create a form you always get a live view of it so if you click on preview you can grab this URL you can even use a URL shortener uh, app extension from Chrome and even gather a QR code for it. So there is a way to give the link to this to anyone. Also, in Google Forms, you have the ability to send it out. So if you have a mail list or a group of students or uh, folks you want to email it to, you can do that. Or you can link it on your uh, website. You can even post it through Twitter. So there's a variety of ways, depending on what your purpose is. In this example, we want our students to complete the quiz. So I'm going to just walk through the steps of taking the quiz. And we won't try to answer them correctly, but let's say we're surfing through the, the resources and we're answering the questions, um, and then we hit submit. In addition to this, the student, I'm going to show you how Fluberoo, an add-on, is used so that, that once the student hits submit, it will auto-grade this assignment. So this student has completed the pre-quiz activity. Um, he's because he's hit hit submit in the form it will show that it's done in Google Classroom as well which is really nice so the teacher sees that one student has completed this when you hit submit on the form it submits it to classroom so it eliminates that extra step of completing it and then saying you've done it now that that's there let's look at the results as an instructor so the results as, as an instructor will be in the form of a spreadsheet so in your, your form, you have, uh, as the creator, you have your ability to view the responses and also review, review them in a spreadsheet. It is the spreadsheet where you're going to add on this tool called Fluberoo to auto-grade the quiz. Now, that being said, make sure you have taken the quiz at least one time and provided all the correct answers so you have an answer key. I'm going to click on add-ons and I've already added on Fluberoo, but if you have not, you need to go to uh, get add-ons and shop in the add-on gallery for Fluberoo and then add it to your sheet. I will now run Fluberoo, grade the assignment, and it will prompt me to make sure that I'm not grading like first name, last name, or anything that's not a selected response. And keep in mind, I am keeping this very simple, selected response questions only. So I ask true and false and A, B, and C. Remember, this is not a high stakes quiz or test. Now I'm going to select my answer key. This is my answer key. 
uh, and then I'm going to go through the process of grading the assignment. So you can see that um, it now will automatically grade it, and that's great for me as a teacher. It explains that I have a new worksheet in my workbook called Grades, and it contains a grade for each submission and a summary of all grades at the top. All right. The very last row shows the percent of students who got each question correct with overall low scoring questions highlighted in orange. Individual students who scored below passing will appear in red font. So it's you can go through the Fluberu tips too to find out how you can accept more than one correct answer. But again, I'm keeping this very simple. All right, so we have the grades. If I go across here, you can see I've got uh, these submissions and it shows the percent correct and incorrect. I want to email the grades out to my students, to those who have taken. Um, so I'm going to click on add-ons again, hover over Fluberu. Now, if later I want to regrade the assignment because new students have taken the quiz or additional students have taken the quiz, I can process that by clicking on regrade. In this case, I want to share the grades with each student so that they can get their individual results. And so I am going to grab the email, which is the username. What I didn't mention earlier is that if you are, if, if the folks taking the quiz are not in your domain, or even if they are, you should have a field to collect their email address. Um, if they're in your domain, meaning like you have an EDU domain or a business domain, you can opt to collect their username. So if, I, if you look at the form here, um, here in the settings, I have the ability to say who can respond, anyone in your domain. So it, it, it could be private to your domain. They have to log in to view the quiz and you automatically collect their username, which is, in essence, their email address. So that's what I did here, and I'm going to share via email. I'm not going to share via Google Drive, but you can. I'm going to share via email. I'm going to include uh, the questions and scores, and you have the option to include the answer key or not. In this case, I'm going to, but you could use this as a, a like a pretest and say, you know, we're going to have a final. Uh, don't provide the answers and tell them to keep trying until they get the right one. It's up to you. You can add a message to all students. Thanks for taking this quiz. Or you can ask a question, whatever you want it to be. Now I click on continue and I'm processing this and it says no grades were shared because no valid email addresses were found or because all the students already had their grades shared with them or because you exceeded your daily mail quota. So now I'm going to go back here, and what happened is um, that my answer key is really that person. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to show you this again. Um, I'm going to go to Betty because she's in my classroom as well. And she's going to take the test, and we'll walk through that again. Now if you get it, you can stop watching this now, uh, knowing that you, you totally get what I'm, I'm doing here. If you want to see that again, uh, stick around for this. So this student, Betty, is going to take the quiz. So she'll click on open, she'll read the directions, she'll use the website provided as a resource, and now she's going to take the quiz. Again, I'm just going to randomly select answers. If you want to make sure that your students don't skip a question, you can make all the questions required so when they hit submit, it will say, oh, you missed one, oh, I've got a double entry here. You missed one of the required questions. Um, you don't have to number them, and it's actually sometimes better not to, so that you uh, can move them around at your leisure. So the student has uh, submitted this, and now as an instructor, I'm going to go back. You can see that uh, Betty Cooper has submitted her responses. So I'm going to run through Fluberu again and see if, uh, indeed, oh, I clicked share, share grades. I want to gr regrade the assignment because I haven't graded hers yet. So I'm going to click on Fluberu and choose regrade assignment. And it will prompt you that it will replace your existing grades, which is no problem. And I have the username, so I click on continue. And now I have uh, my answer key. And now I'm ready to uh, regrade. And then we'll go straight to sharing. All right, back to add-ons, Fluberu, share the grades. 
What I want you to see is what the student gets as the, here's the email address question. I'm going to share by email. I'll include the answer key. I won't leave a message this time. I'll click on continue. Now this should uh, email the grades out and Betty Cooper should get her grade. So it says three grades were successfully shared. Okay. Now I'm going to go to Betty and let's take a look at, it would go to her mailbox. It won't go to classroom. So let's see if Betty got some mail with her grades. This will, her grades will appear in updates, anything that comes from a form or an update, a notification, they'll show up in updates. And you can see that she's got 15 new ones. So let's see what happens here. It says, here's your grade for the pre-quiz activity. She got eight out of 16. And then she can scroll down now and look at what the questions were, what her answer was, and what the correct answer is. So that's a really nice feature. Uh, I hope that this was uh, useful for you and enjoy using Fluberu in forms uh, for your own uh, classroom and students. Thanks for watching.